Hello everyone and welcome back to another Batman Miniature Game 3rd edition battle report on a little bit of a different table this time. I guess we're in Gotham Central Park, or maybe in a dilapidated part of Gotham that has suddenly been filled with trees and grass because Poison Ivy is on the table today as part of a 350 rep crew of Birds of Prey who will be going up against, I, th I think a list that's been on the channel before, a 350 rep Batman list that doesn't feature Batman at all. But there is still some elevation, there's some buildings and whatnot to go on, and it's just a little bit of a, a different flavor to try out for a battle. So we'll see if it makes any big difference as we get into things. But first, as always, let's look at the crews. So here is our Birds of Prey crew being led, as previously stated, by the new Poison Ivy. She has her modified pheromones upgrade, so she can mind control two people uh, instead of just one in a turn if she wants to. Her sidekick is Harley Quinn from the Back to Gotham box and uh, she has a role that says she's got affinity with Poison Ivy so she can be included even if she doesn't have the Birds of Prey affiliation which she does not. Also just for the purposes of making the objective deck the Birds of Prey Harley Quinn objective card has been included rather than joker o meter because joker o meter is bad and hard to keep track of um, so at least there's an outside shot of the other one scoring. Free agent KG Beast with his machine gun attached. And then for henchmen, we have Thug 6, Thug 4, I think, with his axe, and of course Kite Man. As far as other upgrades, Kite Man has once again been turned into Super Saiyan Kite Man. He has a grapple gun, corrosive blood, genetic mutation, uh, I think I'm for forgetting some, oh, a camel vest as well. So he has been given all the kit to use up all the rest of the funding just sitting. And again, for the Birds of Prey objective decks, if the bold text on a card happens, they can put one card face up on the table, which gives it a much easier scoring condition. And here is the Batman crew, but it's more like a Green Arrow crew, because he is the one who's going to be leading them. Uh, the Green Arrow miniatures don't really function that well in 3rd edition because of the rules for moving and firing. But we'll give this another go. I think this crew has been on the, the table once before. But Green Arrow, he has his tactical gloves upgrade, so he has reinforced gloves. His sidekick is Nightwing. And then for henchmen, we have John Diggle, who has handcuffs. We have Officer Merkel, who has tireless. That's not the name of the rule, but that's the rule he gets given from it. Uh, I forget the name of the actual rule. And then we have just a cheap GCPD Cop 1 or 2, with the flashlight at the back there, and then the detective. And both of them have radios. So we are all good to go at deployment, the Batman crew is on your left and they will be taking first activation, the Birds of Prey are on your right. There is some phase 1 and phase 2 cards being played though which we'll quickly go over before we cover specifics. So a simple one, a initial hand draw of a die hard card for Birds of Prey, it is being played on KG Beast so if he lives through the turn which is very very likely, that is an easy 2 points. Phase 2 card though is the new Batman card that got added with the year one releases, unveiling the truth. Target a model that has detective or free agent or sidekick rank. When they reveal a suspect marker, put two stun on this card. If there is any, or if at any point, there is more stun markers on this card than there are any sus suspect markers in play, you score the card. So this is being played on the JCPD detective. So we'll see where he is in a second, but let's quickly look at the Birds of Prey crew. Harley's down there with Audacity, KG Beast is right there. He is outside of four of that light. That was very specific, as is Poison Ivy over here with Audacity. rather. Kite Man has Audacity, and then the two thugs are just next to her. If we come over here, Spurn, Merkel, Green Arrow, all next to each other, all with Audacity. Over here, JCPD Cop, he is within eight as the crow flies. That was on purpose for Green Arrow, so he will have Inspire. Nightwing over here with the last Audacity marker, and JCPD Detective has hidden, but he didn't choose to go particularly that far up. He's got cover, he's got line of sight, so he might do some shooting depending on what happens. But we shall see as we go into Battle Round 1. So JCPD Cop 1 got the game started. I actually forgot he had a radio, so it was utterly irrelevant. He was in Inspire range. He moved up and then used his free Inspired Manipulate to put down a suspect marker such that it also touched JCPD Detective. Which basically means, unless JCPD Detective is killed in Birds of Prey's first activation, they can't stop unveiling the truth from scoring, because if they put down one suspect marker, he, he's still going to get two markers and still score it by revealing his own suspect, because the card does not say it has to be enemy suspect markers, it just says reveal a suspect. So, presumably that's allowed. Seems a little bit tacky, but, uh, you know, I guess it's not guaranteed you'd get one in a turn one play. Let's see what they do regardless. 
Thug 6, which is the, the Thug with Bodyguard, activated and didn't have Audacity, but did have a free inspired manipulate from being so close to Poison Ivy. He moved up enough that, he, well, one, he's out of sight, so it doesn't matter, but he's lit up by the light. He put down a suspect marker and couldn't do anything else. So the JCPD detective activated, he has a radio, so he used his free inspired manipulate to reveal the suspect marker, which would put two stun markers on unveiling the truth. Uh, Birds of Prey only have one suspect down, so it immediately scores for two. As far as I can tell, that, that is an entirely legal play. For his actual activation, he just moved a little bit over here such that he still has cover, and he's trying to put down a little bit of threatening gun line of sight there for when KG Beast decides to make his move. So an early activation, but Poison Ivy was up and she simply moved next to the suspect marker that Thug6 had placed down, revealed it and converted it with valuable commodities so that she is now holding loot. So it is worth three points, it only scores at the end of the game, and it's in play, even if she drops it. But she she is pretty hard to hit in melee, she can... Does she have Charming? I can't remember if this Poison Ivy has Charming. She definitely has Protect Me, so she can make other people nearby take hits for her. So it seemed like the safest place to put the loot, regardless. Nightwing activated with Audacity. He moved up and I guess he had to make a phone call. So he stopped there, he put down a suspect marker, but it has become a snitch, so it's in play. But, to try and guarantee its scores, Disturbance was played as a resource, which is a free resource. During a friendly model's activation, target a sewer marker. That marker cannot be used this round. That marker is not allowed to be used, so no one can go through it to end up there and potentially put them. Well, actually, I don't think it would put them close enough regardless, but that was also just to get it out of the hand. Thug 4 activated without audacity, but close enough to Poison Ivy for that free inspired manipulate. He moved over here and simply just used that to put down a suspect marker. Didn't score anything on it, just prepping for the future. So Green Arrow activated next for the Batman crew, and in a desperate attempt to try and make him useful, he did actually manage to charge up ahead. So he has 12 inches base movement, so no need to use a grapple gun or anything like that. He used good aim, so he's allowed to move and fire his aim weapon, and he gets plus one to attack die rolls. But he moved up to here. Now normally that would mean if you're only rolling one die plus a strength die, you moved, so you can't fire anyway unless you use rapid fire, but if he uses rapid fire, he can't move and shoot an aim weapon. So that's why he's fundamentally broken in 3rd edition, but this green arrow has a once per game multi-arrow, which is 3 arrows, plus the strength die for 4, take the 2 off for moving, you're rolling 2, so he did that, and he actually did it, both went in, because with the plus 1 he was only needing 2s into the poor thug, 4 blood is actually enough that he is removed, and <laughs> all that effort, for his once per game multi-arrow shot, he's just down to normal arrows now, he scored, they won't see me coming, for one victory point. KG Beast activated and for a special action used good aim as well, same skill as Green Arrow so he can move and fire aim weapons, not that that particular part applies, and plus one to ranged attack rolls. From where he was, Green Arrow was within 12, well I just realised I think this Green Arrow has stealth, but he whiffed his, most of his attack roll anyway. Uh, Green Arrow efforted three times, he's an acrobat so he used dodge to take away three dice, that left three, because it would be five plus the strength die, yep. And even with a red dot reroll, still only one hit got through for one blood, one stun. So even if he did have stealth, which would have taken away another two for shooting out of optimal range, or shooting blind, sorry, it still wouldn't have been a lot of damage. And then KG Beast moved over here, just charging straight forwards 10 inches. Yeah, just double checked, and this green arrow does indeed have stealth, so he technically should have moved first, so he was within 8 to see him, which would have taken another 2 dice off of the roll, so he would only have been rolling 1, but thanks to good aim he only needed a 3+, plus, which he did get, so we're still going to keep the damage as is. Officer Merkel activated with audacity, he walked on over the, the landmass there, whatever it is, and he put down a suspect marker, didn't do anything else with his turn, didn't want to move and fire, he's holding on to that ammunition for a later turn. Second last activation for the Birds of Prey was Harley Quinn, and this Harley Quinn is fast. 12 base, acrobat, fast, gives her 15 inches. She used almost all of them to just dart down here. She put down a suspect marker, she'll have cover if John Diggle, who's behind that tree, tries to shoot at her, and she has an acrobat, so obviously she can just exert efforts to dodge. But her unique card, Emancipation, was played as a resource. For one resource point, target a friendly suspect marker within 8 of Harley Quinn, which is the one she just put down. It's basically Joker teeth. 
Center, or, or uh, the gas one. Explosive template gets put on it. You pick a direction, move it 2d6. Anyone under a template suffers blood stun. Doesn't score, but it is a way to do damage and seemed to be a good way to get use out of Harley's attack. Six got rolled, she picked that direction, it went this way, so it only caught Merkel, so Merkel took blood stun. If it went eight, it would have got all three of them and it would have been wonderful, but that's okay. So John Diggle ended up not doing too much with his turn, he just moved up. Because he was moving and firing, Harley would have cover and she could just acrobat, it, was, it would have been a utter waste of his ammunition to fire. And KG Beast as well is a bit too tough to bother with. He can't kill him this turn. So he opted to hold on to his ammo. He can't put down a suspect marker because there's one so close. He might make use of his scheming at the end of a turn. We'll see. But yeah, he did nothing with this turn. So it is over to Kite Man to end off battle round one. It's going to be a little bit hard to see with the camera. But Kite Man activated. He used his grapple gun. So he has a massive 12 inches because he's 6 base. Unless there's suspect markers near him. And he went over... Behind a little bit of, or almost behind that little wrecked building over there. He put down a suspect marker. Before he did so though, sorry, at the start of his activation, I work best alone was played on him. So he put it behind this active model, so behind his card. Well, it's just going to be on the table in this case. Put a uh, numeric counter on this card every time he places down a suspect marker. At the end of the turn, roll a d6. If it matches any of them, score this card. So we are at the end of the turn. A3 is going on that card. So let's just uh, do a roll live and see if it scores. You know, I almost said a 6 for that card. Oh well. It stays in play, and if he puts in more suspect markers, he has more chances of it scoring. But that is the end of battle round 1. So as things stand at the end of the first battle round, everyone who has taken stun damage and is still on the table is going to heal one stun. The snitch marker scores for the Batman crew, in brackets Green Arrow crew, so that's scored for 3. KG Beast lived, so the Die Hard card has put Birds of Prey on the scoreboard. For two victory points, when the camera decides to focus, there we go, getting there, there we are. And the uh, I Were Best Alone on Kite Man stays in play, and so does the valuable commodities for the loot that Poison Ivy is holding. So here we are at the top of turn two, and it will be the Birds of Prey crew going first this time around. And they also have one pass because they're a man down, and they both started with six each. No first phase or second phase cards being played by either side, so they're all going for those phase 3 cards this turn. Uh, Harley has Audacity, KG Beast has Aud uh, Audacity, Poison Ivy does, and so does Kite Man for the Birds of Prey crew. Spartan, Green Arrow, JCPD Detective and Nightwing all have the Audacity for the Batman crew. So yeah, with no cards to go over, we are able to jump straight into Birds of Prey's first activation. So KG Beast got the second turn start for Birds of Prey and he charged forwards rather than firing his gun into base to base with Merkel. He uh, attacked him in close combat with his retractable claws for blood stun. He's a master fighter so he gets plus one to his rolls. Merkel efforted twice and the rolls were not actually that great. So only one got through for one blood one stun. So Merkel is both conscious and still alive. But in doing that KG Beast has made himself a very large target and also scored overdrive once it gets in focus. When an enemy model makes an effort to defend itself, don't declare an effort. So that's two points scored by KG Beast and we'll see what happens to him after that. He can't be arrested because he's run away so there is that. So a lot of playing and counter playing going on as John Diggle activated. He has a free manipulate because he's a henchman and started near Oliver. He came around the corner and used that to reveal the suspect marker that was there in order to score a comb through everything for two points just for revealing a suspect marker. An enemy one, that is. But as a counterplay to that, <clears throat> Tough Girls was played because the bold text happened and any model reveals a friendly sus marker. So this is now just face up on the table and it becomes the easier scoring condition, which is a friendly model reveals an enemy suspect marker and then you also have more in play than them. And that would be a, a big three pointer score if it does. So he still had a tactical action because he used his free manipulate and he was made sure to be within one. So he attacked with his double stun taser. Didn't do too well. This Harlequin has uh, defense 4. She only got hit by the strength die for 2 stun. Kite Man activated with Audacity. Couldn't use the grapple gun again, but his 6 inches was boosted by an extra 2 for starting next to a suspect marker. And he can float with his kite, so he hopped up onto the building here and put down another suspect marker. So Oliver Queen Green Arrow activated. He turned around, stayed where he was, activated rapid fire for his special action because he had Audacity and loosed some arrows into KG Beast's back. Uh, all said and done, this is the roll. 
So not only did he crit, but he got all sixes. So that's six blood damage and KG Beast is knocked over. Now it didn't score anything, but during his turn, he did also play to get out of his hand. For one, they must know pain to heal himself for a further two stun damage, just so that he has those acrobat efforts if he needs to do them. Sorry, slight correction. He healed one blood that he had on him and then one of his stuns. So currently Green Arrow has two stun left on him. So it was Harley Quinn who activated next, and before we cover her turn though, just because I forgot to mention on camera, when Kite Man put down his other suspect marker, he got another marker on I Work Best Alone. So now at the end of the turn, if a 3 or a 5 gets rolled, he will score that card. Anyway, she had more than enough of movement to run right round here, into base to base with Murko at a bit of an odd angle, to reveal the suspect marker that had been there, not to really offer any backup to KG Beast. Uh, she could technically distract someone to lower her defence, but it seemed irrelevant. I guess, I mean, she has, a, has it, so might as well use it on the, the GCPD detective. The important part, though, is that Tough Girls has scored. A friendly model reveals an enemy suspect marker, and then you have more friendly suspect markers than enemy suspect markers in play. There's one enemy one, and there is one, two, three for the birds of prey. So that is three points on the board for them. The GCPD detective activated with audacity and first of all he unloaded his pistol into KG Beast's back. Two hits got through for two blood, two stun. That puts him at eight blood in total and he's actually still alive. He's a tanky boy. He has nine endurance and he's nowhere near knocked out. So he is still very much alive but close to death. So then the GCPD detective actually retreated down here so he was within four of this board edge. You might notice this marker here with a four. That's because wait for backup was played. You pick a cop or anyone with the cop trait. Choose a board edge, the one we just showed. Roll a d6 plus one, so it was three, adds up to four. It counts down at the end of every activation after this one. And then if at the end, when it hits zero, that model is within four of the board edge and is not KO'd or dead, you score the card. But it's very unlikely anyone's gonna kill him back there in four activations time when there's one, two, yeah, there's at least four left to go in this turn and no one can get to him. So it's gonna score, but he had to pull back to his own deployment line for it. Second last activation for Birds of Prey was Thug Six, who was hiding over there behind Poison Ivy. He only has eight inches, but that was enough to get him where you can see him there. He put down his suspect marker, which was within four of the cop there, and in turn actually scored in position. A friendly model places a suspect marker within four inches of an enemy model, and you also have at least four in play. That is exactly four. One, two, three, four. GCPD Cop 1 activated with his radio, he moved up and he revealed that suspect marker that Thug 6 just put down and scored another easy comb through everything for two more victory points. So final activation was Poison Ivy for the Birds of Prey, came forwards and then used control pheromones on the GCPD Cop, he failed his willpower roll so you can do two actions with him. It was a move and an attack against Nightwing, it actually did get through with the strength die on a crit so he did one stun with his Tonfa. Uh, the knockdown doesn't matter because this Nightwing has jump up, there's no enemies left to activate and he hasn't had his turn yet, so that's irrelevant. But for controlling him with Hypnotize, Poison Ivy has scored, I'm feeling weird for inflicting an effect on an enemy model. And her control pheromone upgrade didn't apply here because she couldn't see anyone else to try and use it on. So that is it for the Birds of Prey. Nightwing still has to go with Audacity and Merkel has to activate without Audacity. Merkel went first of the two and just pulled away, didn't want to try and hit with single stun, couldn't shoot point blank, so he just backed off. But that does also tick down the wait for backup to zero with his activation being complete, and he's obviously fine, so it has scored for two. So Nightwing ignored the urge trying to attack KG Beast because knocking him out is actually a much harder feat than just killing him with how much blood damage he has on him. He sprinted forwards 13 inches, 12 plus 1 for an acrobat. He put down a marker, it's not actually a marker, it's a snitch, but it's the end of the round, so it instantly scores and reverts back to a normal marker at the end of the round anyway, so that's why I've just put down a normal marker, but it has scored for three. So there is no phase four cards being played by either side, and I did just realize KG Beast's marker was on the knockout side, not the knockdown side, but he isn't knocked out, he is just knocked down, just to be clear. Uh, but nothing scoring, so all that remains to be seen before we go into battle round three is whether or not I work best alone scores for Kite Man. So, oh, I accidentally killed Merkel. I'm sorry, Merkel. I'm so sorry. You were there somewhere. You were facing that way. That is a two, so it does not score. Stays in play, though, as does the valuable commodities for what Poison, Poison Ivy is holding. 
So here we are at the top of the penultimate battle round. There is a Phase 1 card being played by the Birds of Prey and a Phase 2 for Batman. The Phase 1 is Aerial 2. So your opponent places an event marker in contact with the tallest scenery element in the gaming area. The tallest scenery element by a millimetres is right smack dab this in the centre. So the event marker has been placed there. And if at the end of the uh, turn the Birds of Prey have more friendly models than enemy models who are not KO'd within four of that marker, they will score this card for a massive three. So that's another one just in play till the end of the round. The phase two for the Batman crew is another unveiling the truth and this one is being played on Nightwing. So if he reveals a suspect marker, friendly or otherwise, two stun markers and then once this card has more markers on it than there are enemy suspect markers on the table, you score it. And we can take a quick look at who has Dasty. Spartan does, Nightwing does, Green Arrow does, and the JCPD Detective does. Harley does for the Birds of Prey, as does KG Beast, Poison Ivy, and Kite Man. And it will be the Batman crew, slash Green Arrow, taking first activation. So Green Arrow got turn 3 started for the Batman crew. He stayed where he was, he activated Rapid Fire. Only the strength I got through, but he did the 2 blood. He only needs to do 1 to remove a very large threat in the form of KG Beast from the table. So KG Beast is gone. And no cards scored on that, but obviously he had Audacity and he isn't getting a turn now. Harleen Quinzel activated and she had a pretty awesome turn. For her special action she activated 360 Strike. She moved so that she was within an inch of both Green Arrow and Merkel. And that means that she rolls her attack roll but it gets applied to everybody within range. Nobody is allowed to use efforts and you just compare the one result to everybody's defense roll. So... She got two smacks, oh her mallet as well is heavy devastating so it's plus one to strength die rolls. She gets to roll two strength dice and apply both results. So that's not to be uh, trifled with. She smacked Green Arrow twice and for it has push as well so because two hits got through he got pushed back two inches. Four stun. Merkel got three hits through on him. Six stun, enough to knock him out so he won't be getting a turn. Knocking him back three inches and scoring her they must know pain for inflicting six damage on him with a melee attack. JCPD Detective activated, he moved up and unloaded the last of his ammo into Thug 6, but you will see it's not 2 blood, 2 stun, it is 4 stun, which is actually good for him because it keeps him conscious, he's got 5 willpower, but that's because a non-lethal ammo was played, so you convert all blood damage to stun, and it scores for 2. Kite Man activated and he could once again use his grapple gun and he was also next to a suspect for a little bit of extra movement, although he didn't use it all. He came down here so that he was within four of the JCPD detective. He put down a suspect marker and that scored another imposition because he placed it within four of an enemy model and that is back to it being exactly four suspects. One, two, three, and four. Nightwing activated and darted over here to the suspect marker that was there and revealed it to remove the number of birds of prey suspect markers by one so they're back down to three and that puts two markers on the Unveiling the Truth as well, but he's going to need to get two more for it to score. He is also within four of the event marker as well. Thug6 was next up and he came around the corner without Audacity. He did have a free manipulate, but oh, actually, there, now that that marker's gone, he could totally put down a suspect marker. He'll put down a suspect marker there, we'll get it in a second. But he moved such that he is within four of the event marker as well, but also still within bodyguard slash protect me range of Poison Ivy. John Diggle activated, he came around the corner over here, moving and shooting, he shot his pistol into Harley Quinn, but she just used the dodge roll, efforted twice to make sure no shots got through. So from where Poison Ivy began her turn as the final activation for Birds of Prey this turn, she fired her explosive spores at the JCPD detective, it puts down the explosive template, it only caught the other JCPD cop, hits them both on a 3 plus, and does one blood and poisons them. That was an effort to try and score the Pretty Birds objective card, however, that stipulates that both targets can't be able to see you before you go in and attack them, and the JCPD detective could see her. So it didn't score. She did damage and poison them, but didn't do what was wanted. So then she did a movement action. She came around the corner here just to give majority to here. And now it is over to just him left, I think. Yep, to end off the penultimate turn. So rather than go for scoring, the JCPD cop opted instead to do some denial and come around the corner here with his radio or inspire because Green Arrow's right there. He put down a suspect marker, but more importantly, he's now made it a draw for that event marker because Green Arrow, him, and Nightwing are just within four, and then Ivy, uh, Harley Quinn, and Thug Six are also. So it's three on each side. So as we go to the end of the round, Aerial 2 cannot score. 
So at the end of the penultimate turn, forgot to mention once again, but Kite Man, when he put down a third Sussman marker, put a third number on his card. So we're going to see if I were best alone scores on a 1, 3, or a 5. <laughs> Poor Kite Man. No, it does not score. It stays in play for one final round. Uh, Merkel did not wake up, so he is not getting a turn in the final activation. And, oh, didn't do the poison check, so I'm just going to roll them quickly off camera. He is fine. GCB the detective. Oh, I need to check his endurance. He is not fine. He took one damage. But he's still alive. So, as far as other cards in play, Viable Commodity stays in play, Our Best Alone stays in play, and Unveiling the Truth on Nightwing stays in play, although it will score if he reveals a suspect marker in the final turn. Oh, sorry, there is a bit of a strange addendum, because it's not a Phase 4 card, but it only scores in Phase 4 despite being a Phase 3. Does that make sense? The Nest actually did score. See, it is a Phase 3 card, but it says during the recount phase. So actually, I don't know if that means you would have to play it during someone's turn, I guess that would, right? Because that's a variable icon, so technically it shouldn't score. But it should have been triggered during Kite Man's turn, obviously, because he is inside the enemy deployment zone, and there is no enemies inside the enemy deployment zone, so it meets the criteria to score. Uh, it'll be a contentious issue if there's a difference of three points at the end of the game. For now, we're going to count it as scoring, but I do now realise, yes, you would, would have to play it during your turns, though. The opponent would know what you're trying to do and potentially move someone back. Although if they move someone back, Aerial 2 would have scored and that would have scored for the same amount. So actually I don't think it matters, but just as a, a clarity thing. So thanks to there only being 4 surviving miniatures and having 2 unused passes from that last turn, Birds of Prey are taking first activation in the final turn of the game. There is one Phase 1 card being played by the Birds of Prey. It is Kite Man's unique called Overwhelming Charisma. Choose one friendly model and one enemy model. The chosen friendly model reveals more suspect markers this round than the enemy. Kite Man is choosing himself. He's over there. And he is choosing Diggle. John Diggle, Spartan. So if he reveals a suspect marker and John Diggle doesn't, then he'll score this card. So it either eats up John's final turn or it will score three, which is actually pretty good. Speaking of which, uh, as far as table layout, all the Birds of Prey survivors have Audacity because there's only four of them. And Merkel isn't getting a turn. So every conscious person except the GCPD cop for the Batman crew slash Green Arrow also have audacity. So seeing no better way to secure points than to help out Kite Man, Harley activated first, charged after John Diggle, went full three efforts, she's doing double stun so he did not. He got smacked back by three hits for six stun which is exactly how much willpower he has so he is knocked out and will not be revealing any suspect markers. So as long as Kite Man does, overwhelming charisma will score. With that three stun she gave herself though, Harley's actually one away from being knocked out. So Nightwing's going to have gone through this entire game without throwing fists once. He activated his grapple gun, he shot over there to safety, he revealed the suspect marker which puts two more markers on uh, Unveiling the Truth, which is one more than there are enemy suspect markers, so it instantly scores for two. I think that puts him at four victory points scored in total for the game. So it's not like he's done nothing, but it is weird having him not fighting at all. So before we cover the next activation that you can see down below, when Nightwing revealed that suspect marker, it did actually put face up on the table another Tough Girls because an enemy model revealed a suspect marker. So now the criteria for scoring this becomes a friendly model reveals an enemy suspect marker and after doing that you have more in total than they do. So that's another card in play down there for the pile. But as for who actually activated, Thug6 activated, he came around the side here so he was just 4 inches out of the suspect marker behind Poison Ivy. He put down another one and that scored the final in position for putting a suspect marker down within four and then having four in play or at least four which it's back to one two up there in the building for three and down there by kite man for four the gcpd detective activated he was up here he just turned around and shot into kite man's back it would have done three blood three stun but instead a non-lethal ammo was played to score two points for changing it all to stun now normally six stun would be exactly enough to knock out kite man because he has 6 willpower, but thanks to his uh, mutagen, or whatever it's called, mutated serum that Poison Ivy gave him, he actually has desensitized, so he does not fall unconscious, he just starts taking more blood damage on stuns. So, he's still able to have a turn, and GCB Detective used his 10 inches after that to come down here just in case they have another of the um, scoring enemy deployment cards. So basking in the glow of desensitized, Kite Man activated, he walked next to the suspect marker here, he revealed it, which covers the criteria for overwhelming charisma, although it scores at the end of the, the turn. 
It does also score tough girls, because, ironically, because a friendly model reveals an enemy assessment marker and there's more friendly assessment markers in play than enemies. So that might have been a bit of a bad choice in giving him the opportunity to live there. Because he scored three, he's going to score another three at the end of the game whether he dies or not now. Kite Man has done a lot of work, despite I work best alone, never rolling for him. Partially out of spite and partially for a good reason, Green Arrow activated, he once again used rapid fire so he couldn't move and he shot into Kite Man. Three arrows needing threes, he got all three through with his plus one bonus as well for Expert Marksman. So six blood, Kite Man got taken out. He has corrosive blood so he explodes like a xenomorph but there's no one around to get hurt by him so that's that. But he did also score a catch a bullet for one victory point for doing six damage. So Poison Ivy was last up for the Birds of Prey yet again and there's no cards for her to score. Uh, spoilers for the final Birds of Prey hand, three of the four cards are pretty birds. So she just moved over here so that she had people to protect onto, protect me onto. And it's just over to GCPD Cop without Audacity with Inspire though to maybe score some last minute card of some kind for the Batman crew. Uh, looking things over, the best he could do would be to reveal an enemy suspect that would only score a card if they had more after that and they wouldn't because if one was removed Birds of Prey would still have three and they just have the one and two left over. So we are at the end of the game. Overwhelming Charisma scores because Kite Man revealed a suspect marker and Diggle did not because Harley knocked him out. Valuable Commodities is still on Poison Ivy so that also scores. Does Kite Man from the... Oh we know he died so I guess you can't. Uh, well, or can you? Let me read this. Active friendly model, every time you place a suspect marker, you roll a numeric counter. If the result matches the numeric counter on a friendly suspect, score this card. It doesn't actually say on the text, it doesn't apply if they're dead. It just says during the recount phase you check. I, I, I'm not going to count it, because that's silly, but would it, would it have mattered? It would not have mattered. So it doesn't matter. Okay, we can go to the final scores. So here we are with our two scorer piles. Uh, I think the birds are pretty really well there for a change. So let's see, this is the Batman crew over here. So that is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. A fair score at 22. Birds of Prey though. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 28 playing, what was it, 22? So the three points would not have mattered either way. So yeah, that's a, a pretty strong showing from the Birds of Prey, although their final hand was absolute garbage. Prior to that, they made it work. It was not a great, like it wasn't a super strong Batman crew, of course, with Green Arrow. He sort of works once you get him in the middle with lots of potential firing arcs. But prior to that, he, he just doesn't function. The Dark Knight Returns Green Arrow is the same. I, I played a match against him the other day there, actually. So, yeah, he has the same problems. So, uh, an interesting one. Birds of Prey did well. I think that's probably the best they've done on this channel so far. Because they have a hard deck to score. And hopefully, mostly everything was done correctly. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much for doing so. Please do show your support if you want to see more in the future. And until then, that's for now.